Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Jabin Jabari and I have the honor of introducing the one man that doesn't actually need an introduction, Mark. Mark founded and started OWASP 20 years ago, the very foundation that started many of our cybersecurity careers. You may also know him as a founder and CEO of SourceClear, which was acquired by Veracode in 2018, and more recently, the co-founder of OpenRaven. I won't take too much time away from Mark. I will be moderating the 20th anniversary keynote chat in the OWASP Slack, and time permitting, I will ask questions. Mark, all to you. Great, thank you very much, Jubin. Let me figure out how to share my, uh, my screen here. Um, so I have, uh, I've got copious notes. I won't be reading directly from the notes, but uh, a lot of stuff that I wanna make sure we cover. So, so bear with me, you see uh, Yoda and, and a wasp staring out into the galaxy. So uh, I hope you'll kind of see my theme. I just wanna kind of talk about what stuff's, uh, what stuff's happening in the, in the future. For, for those who don't know, let me just kind of quickly walk through the history of how OWASP started. Um, recently in life, I actually got diagnosed as being bipolar. Um, and if you're familiar with, or you know about what bipolar is, it's manic depression. It's the new word for manic depression. And uh, mania is uh, essentially where you get fixated on a problem. You, you don't take no for an answer. You you essentially do things that are potentially risky, potentially dangerous, um, and you, you often don't listen to people. And it's interesting looking back on life um, about various things that have happened, um, buying crazy houses off of uh, you know, a whim and all sorts of crazy stories that, uh, that I can share, but it's also probably OWASP was created in a very mild and early form of mania. Um, which, which is, is, is kind of interesting. Um, for those who don't know, I was moderating a mailing list called WebAppSec um, way before the Slack stuff. It, I found the OWASP Slack recently, and it's like 15,000 people on that Slack, which is, which is amazing. I think we had about 1,000 people on a mailing list. It was a sister mailing list for BugTrack, if you're familiar with what BugTrack is. It was the way that everyone discussed uh, security in general back in those days. And we had a bunch of people on that mailing list. Um, and I was running software security at Charles Schwab, the big financial services company um, here in the, in the US in San Francisco. And we got on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Um, we had a security problem. It was a cross-site scripting problem. And the CIO came running down the hallway and said, who's the new guy running AppSec? And it was me. And uh, hey, what's this problem? And what are we going to do about it? And what essentially ensued is that we had had three people complain through the call center. One was the person who ultimately reported the problem. Um, and then two people were vendors trying to sell us uh, a, a magic technology solution for the problem. But the challenge I had as the AppSec guy is that when people were questioned and say, hey, what you're saying we should do and what you're saying we shouldn't do, these vendors are saying this thing what's the truth here? Where is the place on the internet that we can go and look at the independent information? And frankly, I thought, this is just crazy. This is absolutely you know, nuts. And someone needs to go figure out how to solve this problem. So I went to a bunch of people that I trusted on the web AppSec mailing list and said, hey, I'm going to go solve this, this problem. A bunch of people said, you're absolutely crazy. Um, you're never going to be able to, be able to make, a, make an impact. You have to go and document massive amounts of stuff. You're going to wind up with a whole lot of people contradicting you. Um, uh, but like I said, it was uh, sod you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And what, what often happens when you, when you have that condition as well is you get yourself into a mode where your brain operates very, very effectively. And I quite literally spent 48 hours over a weekend without sleeping, writing a document. And that document ultimately became the first version of the OWASP guide. It wasn't one of the things that we launched with. Um, and frankly, it was awful looking back at it. Um, as Andrew Vanderstock will tell you, he, uh, he had to rewrite pretty much it from the ground, from the ground up. But, but that was basically kind of how it, how it happened. We had a static HTML website. Um, that if you wanted to go and upload it, you have to uh, use FTP to go push, push a piece of content to it. And, uh, and away we went. Um, and honestly, that is my last major contribution to OWASP. I started it, I got the thing going, but OWASP's success is due to all the people that have contributed. 
there have been massive amounts of contributions over the over the time and it's all of everyone's contributions that have made the the thing successful um Linus uh, Torvalds has a great quote. He said that one of the successes of Linux is because he's lazy and he likes taking credit for everyone else's work. Um, I hope I'm neither of those things. Um, so uh, neither of those, but you know, the success of any community in any major project is a result of, of everyone coming together and loads of people doing work. So on that note, I want to make sure that a bunch of people get, get credit whose names aren't often seen, but were absolutely instrumental in the early days of, of the project. And I honestly, I kind of thought a lot about this slide because what I didn't want to do was to miss people out. And there are absolutely people that are missed out here for sure. Um, and there's no, there's no way around that. But these are some names that you often don't hear about that were absolutely instrumental in the early days. Ingo Struck, who's over in Germany, is a developer extraordinaire and was working on all sorts of interesting stuff in the early days. And he was a real developer's developer and was just absolutely amazing. Gabe Lawrence, who is still around, um, had actually tried to start an early startup, um, building one of the web first, and I think it probably was the first web application firewall. Um, he and a, and, a, and a great crew were just too early to the market. Um, and as a result, couldn't make that company commercially successful, um, but instead decided to go open source that code to, to OWASP and what was the Stinger project, which was one of the first, first things. Um, and as we've seen companies, you know, Signal Sciences and, and all these other companies have been incredibly successful with that technology. They were just simply too early. Um, David Raphael was, was building a, a bunch of tech. Mike Delabero has just always been there. Um, Stan Guzik ran the first ever OWASP conference in New Jersey. I was uh, logged on earlier and saw Tim, uh, Tom Brennan, who's, who's another name that's always been around. And, uh, but Stan Guzik put a lot of effort into organizing these things. Um, and so, you know, a whole list of names. Dennis Cruz is, uh, is just a man who makes me smile. He is like the, the Duracell bunny who is full of ideas and just gets shit done. And, you know, and so, and so it goes on. But I wanted to, to, to put those names up because they often don't get credit from, from the early days. But it's thousands of people, right? The, the whole project has been, you know, incredibly, um, incredibly successful. Um, so let me flick through, um, flick through a bunch of notes. So this is this is the kind of section that's almost like the best man speech right this is the wedding speech of like reflecting on the last 20 years and uh you know because oh it's all 2020 which is which is quite phenomenal to to think about it um if you think about what happened 20 years ago um i made a bunch of notes here the iphone didn't exist until 2007 um quite mind-boggling aws launched in 2006 years after OWASP was started. Azure was even later than that, 2008. Um, Git, which we all are totally familiar with, and you'll hear from a special guest uh, later uh, about, about Git stuff. 2005, when we first started OWASP, we were using CVS. If any, if any developers are that old that know about CVS, you'll, you'll cringe completely. But that was what was used to, to manage stuff in the early days. Um, Firefox was invented afterwards. Safari didn't even exist. Chrome came along eight years later. Um, it's pretty amazing to think of really, you know, the, the people that kind of jumped in in the early stage and just how technology has changed over the space of that last 20 years. If we sit and face down where we are today, the application security space has changed fundamentally as well. Back in the early days, of course, we built everything from, from the ground up, um, every piece of code. People were building crypto libraries and were building everything themselves. These days, we largely assemble applications. It's a combination of you know, things that are resources and services that are online from AWS. You wouldn't build your own crypto service today, use KMS. You, you wouldn't, you know, go and host your own database. You, you, you spin up an RDS instance or something. Um, so it's a combination of infrastructure. It's certainly a combination of code that we run and sometimes run in serverless manners, right? And, uh, you know, on the, on the web. Um, and it's pulling data together from various different places through APIs, data lakes, and all of those, those good things. So things have fundamentally changed um, of the way we build stuff. We're today even seeing things like infrastructure as code. I was watching a 
a talk just now about uh, about CI/CD, and you know, it's not code is code is still everywhere, but in many cases, it's used as glue. It's pulling different things together. So the last twenty years have seen massive changes in in how we've done things. Um, we are still faced with massive problems and massive problems with open source. Um, as uh, Steuben said, my, my last company was acquired by, by Veracode and that was doing open source security around libraries. And that problem is as prevalent today as it, as it ever has been. If we look at what happened with SolarWinds and uh, we look at all of these supply chain problems, there is no shortage of problems that still exist and are far, far from being solved in that space alone. Um, I have been doing a bunch of work uh, over the last, I guess, five years with US intelligence and some of the intelligence agencies. And we've been looking at, you know, how prevalent the vulnerabilities are in open source libraries that are out there. And uh, you'll hear later from, uh, from Steve Christie, who created the CVE. And when we looked at it, uh, I want to say probably five or six years ago, there were about 6,000 CVEs that had been, had been reported. And we pretty with pretty high degree of confidence estimated that there are actually about a quarter of a, uh, a quarter of a million of them in the open source libraries alone, because all of the libraries are getting copied. Things like Git allows you to get clone and just essentially create digital replicas. And not only do you make a digital replica of the code, you make a digital replica of the vulnerability as well. So over the space of the last 20 years, we're fundamentally seeing new types of problems occur as this amazing technology transformation uh, happens. Um, what's also kind of worth reflecting on is, is a really fundamental change in, in OWASP. It was driven by Jeff Williams and, and Dave Wickers, who, again, you know, names were not on that previous list, but have massive contributions back into to, to OWASP, is the wiki. Um, when we started, like I said, it was first a static website, which, frankly, incredibly hard for people to, to, to contribute to. Um, and the minute that was moved to a wiki, all of a sudden we democratized content contribution, um, which made just a massive change into the into the project. So there's been some some amazing amazing things that have that have happened um, that have gone over it. I also want to reflect. I was watching Sharif's uh, 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 little video that he that he put together on um, on Twitter the other day. That he he turned when he when he had a bit of a cancer scare. He turned to some people that were in. Uh, in, the, in OWASP and, and to talk to them. Um, and I have had countless just, you know, heartwarming things that have happened uh, over the years and funny stories. Um, and one of them happened recently, Dan Cuthbert um, sent me a signal and I was having a bad day um, for, for whatever, whatever reasons. And I get this message through from Dan, which uh, as you can read, reflecting on 20 years of OWASP, mad to see what had happened and, uh, I can tell you just heartwarming moments like that make you realize, you know, what community really means and what people, when they come together, um, do. The, uh, the Wall Street Sum is, is one of the funny ones. Um, in the early days, I was actually in, uh, in Lower Manhattan and Wall Street with a fairly big name CS, uh, chief security officer. Um, he's still a, a chief security officer, a different, different company now. And, uh, quite literally sat across the desk from him um, when he uh, very confidently told me that he was really the guy that was behind all of OWASP and all of its content. And uh, I was absolutely mind boggled that uh, someone could, could, could say that. Um, and I tried to keep a straight face and I, um, I swear I didn't keep a straight face, but uh, you hear all these crazy things. Um, the bottom one is a picture I was at in Singapore um, where uh, I had, a, had an office, a, a great team with my last company and was talking, I think it was Hack in the Box, which is, a, which is a great conference out there. And afterwards, a guy came up to me and he said, you don't know who I am, do you? And uh, on, honestly, I, I didn't know who he was. Um, and he said, my name's Jim. Uh, it's like, oh, great. Nice to meet you, Jim. Um, and he said, my name's Jim Giovanni. And I recognized the name, but frankly couldn't think and he said i created the first owasp logo and sure enough the light bulb went off and again a random guy um on the internet when we decided we were trying to figure out how to create a brand said oh, i'll do the brand i can do graphics and uh, and jim there is responsible for that and i think you know whatever it was 15 years later you uh you realize these connections of people um 
the top right is my uh, is my lovely daughter Hannah, who is uh, is now eighteen, and she is off at university in the UK. She's reading law, and uh, you know uh, she's uh, she's a, a high functioning young lady. She's a year ahead of her time, and uh, and living life to the full um, at a UK university, which uh, which typically means drinking an awful lot and enjoying life. And about four or five weeks ago. Um, my wife and I came out of our U.S. citizenship swearing in ceremony and I turned on my phone and there's a, a WhatsApp message from Hannah. And uh, it was pretty clear she was at a party. We'll leave it at that. It was, uh, it was a fairly garbled, garbage text. Um, but the gist of the text was is that she was at a house party and I think it was like 1 or 2 a.m. And she said there was a bunch of drunk computer science guys that are hobbling in the room saying how OWASP is absolutely stupid and they're much, much smarter than they are. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, like, you know, for a law student halfway around the world to be at a drunk student party and for people to be talking about OWASP is, is just quite phenomenal for, uh, for the impact that it has had. Um, so that's some interesting stories and there are many, many, many more um, of them. This is a set of kind of comments that are intended in the, the best possible way. Um, they are not intended to be negative, and I just want to make sure that that's, that's um, you know, super clear. Um, they're intended to be kind of, you know, um, constructive criticism, um, and please take it in, in that way, um, because it is interesting when you reflect back. And, you know, I actively left OWASP in about 2006, 2007. And the reason I left is that when I first started it, my vision was is that it would be a project for developers, um, that we could provide guidance that was really aimed at software developers and that was kind of the authoritative truth in software developers. I was very lucky when I was at Microsoft. I, uh, on my corridor by my office was a guy called Ward Cunningham and Ward was the guy who created the wiki. If you're familiar with, with that, he was a huge um, developer. He was part of the Agile Manifesto, one of those people. And Ward and I used to talk a lot, frankly, about OWASP and go for coffee. And, and, and what Ward kind of shared and reflected, particularly about his patterns and practices work, is that when a community forms, then it tends to swarm. And it tends to be um, the collective uh, direction. And, you know, he really kind of encouraged me and said, look, you know, you can fight and you can swim upstream um, against this and you can really try and make it become a developer community. But the reality is um, what you probably need to do is to go, feel, go, go create another developer community um, and try and attract a set of developers versus a set of secu application security people if you really want that to happen. People will tend to create things to fulfill their own itch and, and scratch their own itch. Um, and that I think is true today. And if I'm critical, um, one of my things is that I think that OWASP hasn't fulfilled that potential that I had. That's not to say it hasn't fulfilled massive impact as, as we all know. But I think it's fair to say that the majority of people that come to OWASP are already security people. And I think that that's a little bit of a shame, um, a big bit of a shame. Um, I went earlier and I typed in the word secure coding guideline. and OWASP was not on the front page of Google. And when I clicked through to the piece of content that was there, it had been created in 2010 and hadn't been updated. And I think that's a real shame because people look at OWASP and there is nothing out there on the internet today. We'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. Um, but if I'm a developer and I type in secure coding guidelines and I come to something that hasn't been updated in 2010, I'm gonna go elsewhere. Um, and that's a huge, a huge missed opportunity. I think over the years as well, OWASP has, has really failed to partner, unfortunately, with, with big tech. So when I was at Microsoft, I ran a thing called MSDN, which was the Microsoft Developer Network and TechNet, which is a, a way we would seed developer tools to, to the market. We had a, a million subscribers, you know, 50 million page views a month. Um, and frankly, I had a very large budget. My, the, my business unit would generate more than a billion dollars of revenue. And so there was an opportunity for me to help OWASP. And I offered to figure out how to brokerage for Microsoft to get involved um, on a deeper level. You, you watch large technology companies 
really lean in to helping amazing communities. And, and OWASP is, is one of those amazing communities. But unfortunately, kind of what, what happened was that um, I was really just asked for a check. Um, it wasn't a case of, hey, let's go figure out, we want to go solve this problem together. Will you fund it? It was, hey, here's how you can sponsor something uh, without anything tangible at the end. And I think the result of that has mean is that OWASP hasn't been able to partner with big tech in the same way that other things have. And we'll talk about the Linux Foundation, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, and I think that those are, are some of the missed opportunities that have happened over the last 20 years that I hope don't happen over the next, the next 20. Um, I'll skip the bureaucracy slide, but I just make the comment, you know, there is a reputation for, for bureaucracy and, uh, and I'm not sure that's super helpful. Um, I went to attend a local chapter meeting once and was told that my slides couldn't be on my own slide format. They had to be done on someone's PowerPoint format and, uh, and things. And, you know, for a community project, it's extremely important that, you know, it's grassroots. It's not a, a load of bureaucracy in order to get things done. Um, and I know that um, the leadership have been working incredibly hard on that. And, uh, and that's fantastic. But I encourage you to kind of continue to do the same because <clears throat> it's got to be easy. It's got to be friction free to do it. One of the very first things that I did was est establish vendor neutrality. Um, and frankly, kind of before rappers had beef on the internet, I had beef with someone around this and, uh, you know, um, we won't name names, but, you know, what happened basically was that in the early days, someone said, I want OWASP to mandate my product. And the code was indeed open source, but it was GPL and they were building a commercial company on it. And they wanted to, to say that this was the web app scanner. And frankly, it was rubbish. It was, it was not right. Um, that is not vendor neutrality. Um, and, you know, I, I stuck my foot in it. Like I said, it caused, you know, uh, internet beef or whatever it is before the term of internet beef. And, um, and, and, and it was really important. And I think that vendor neutrality has been one of the great things. I hope that that doesn't change. Um, and I hope that, you know, the relationship with vendors doesn't change. But frankly, I've attended some, some chapter meetings where it's kind of like a timeshare pitch before by a vendor um, in return for, for free pizza. Um, I think OWASP's better than that. There is an opportunity to truly create vendor neutrality and build a commercial model, which allows that big tech and those people to engage. Um, and I hope that that is, uh, that that is, is done. Um, so that's that. Um, I don't wanna, don't wanna ponder on that. I asked a bunch of friends, a bunch of people I know to share what they think about OWASP. And so I'm gonna play you about five minutes of a of, of video and I hope you smile as much as I do watching these. Hi, I'm Bruce Schneier and I wanna congratulate OWASP on their 20th anniversary. 20 years ago, application security was uh, kind of radical and a big deal. Today it's common and I don't wanna underestimate the uh, work that OWASP did to make that change. It's been great at being associated with the organization in the capacity I have been for the past 20 years. And I wish them uh, another 20 years. I don't wish us all 20 years of bad software security, but that's what we're getting. And OWASP is there and gonna be there. And thank you and congratulations. I'm Justin Samani, Chief Security Officer at Unity. I just wanted to say an incredible and huge thanks to each and every one of you making OASP the leader in application security for the entire industry. I couldn't be more appreciative of each and every one of you solving the most fundamental problem that I feel we have in the entire industry. Congrats, happy anniversary, and look forward to more of the great work. Thank you. Hi, this is Chris Weisopel. I was on the first OWASP Technical Advisory Board 20 years ago. Five years later, I founded the application security company, Vericode. I wanna thank all the people who've contributed to OWASP projects over all these intervening years. The sum total of all your work is an amazing accomplishment that I never would have imagined could have been done 20 years ago. Everyone using the web and all applications really is safer because of you. Hey everybody, Jen Easterly from CISA here. Huge congratulations to OWASP for 20 years as champions of the software security cause. 
We greatly appreciate the contributions that OWASP and others make every day to build awareness of just how important cybersecurity is to our everyday lives. As I often say, cyber is truly a team sport and I'm super psyched that we are on the same team. CISA supports the work of organizations like OWASP as we continue to bite down on vulnerabilities to secure tomorrow and the next 20 years. Keep on securing on. Hi, I'm John Viega, author of the first book on AppSec and I was part of OWASP's original technical board. I started out with high hopes for OWASP, dot, dot, dot. And honestly, I've been continually amazed by how huge an impact it's had all across the industry. It's been amazing. So the day might not ever come where AppSec isn't needed anymore, but if it does, I'm confident it's gonna be because of OWASP and its amazing volunteers. So thank you all for your hard work and dedication. Hello, this is Jack Daniel, and I have pulled my mobile office off to the side of some highway somewhere because it was important to say this. Thank you and congratulations. OWASP has been amazing force for good and for education in our field for the past 20 years. And it's thanks to all of you, from the founders to those of you who have just put your toes in to take a look at what OWASP is all about. Thank you and congratulations on 20 amazing years. Hi, I'm Steve Christie Coley from MITRE. I'm a co-founder of both CVE and CWE. OWASP's success has been both a blessing and a curse, much like it has been for CVE. To the next generation out there, I love your energy, I love your enthusiasm and your innovation. I can't wait to see what you do over the next 20 years. Happy anniversary, everybody. My name is Justin Dolly, and I'm Chief Security Officer at Sauce Labs. Over the past 20 years, OWASP has evolved into the cornerstone of AppSec scanning and analysis across the entire security landscape. This is why we at Sauce Labs are leveraging OWASP's app to develop our own security testing capabilities. Many congratulations on 20 years of incredible contributions to the security community. Hey there, this is Steve Herod. I'm former CTO at VMware and an active investor in cybersecurity at General Catalyst. Uh, congratulations to everyone involved in OWASP for 20 years, 20 years of contributions. You've all raised the awareness of the challenges and the importance of application security. And really at a higher level, you've helped make this booming digital economy a safer one. Now, obviously there's a huge amount of work to do, uh, a lot as you know, but I'm confident that your collective leadership and this organization as a whole is really key to that. So once again, congratulations and here's to the next 20 years. This is Michael Howard from Microsoft. I just want to take a moment to wish a very happy 20th birthday to OWASP. It's been one heck of a fantastic journey. Uh, every day I see the positive impact that OWASP has made to our customers, to industry, and to compliance programs. Never underestimate the impact that OWASP has had on this unsecure software engineering. Happy birthday, guys. Hi, this is Phil Venables, CISO at Google Cloud. On this 20th anniversary of OWASP, I'd like to say a big thank you and congratulations to all all of those who set this up and have made it what it is today. It's really not an understatement to say that web application security would be in a significantly worse shape today. And so would cybersecurity overall without this work. Really well done. Congratulations on 20 years and, and uh, best of luck for the, uh, for the next 20. Hi, I'm Jim Zemlin, the executive director of the Linux Foundation. And I want to congratulate OWASP on its 20th anniversary. As you celebrate your 20th anniversary and Linux celebrates its 30th anniversary this year, it is amazing to think how far we've all come. All of us here at the Linux Foundation across all our projects admire and respect the work that OWASP has done to help improve the collective security baseline across the software industry and across society. You know, we all depend on software these days for every aspect of our life. And the work that OWASP does makes all of us collectively safer. Congratulations on the 20th anniversary and here's to 20 more great years. This is Tom Pressingwerner, co-founder of GitHub and prolific open source author. I'd like to thank everyone that has ever contributed to OWASP and all the amazing work you've done to increase the overall security footprint of the internet. Because of you, I finally feel like I can take this thing off. I, uh, I don't know what to say. Hopefully you're smirking. I can't see people um, uh, as much as I am, but uh, you know, I know Tom was smirking there, but like that's literally the founder of, of GitHub. Um, 
talking about the impact that OWASP has had. Um, Michael Howard was the guy who created the secure development lifecycle at, at Microsoft when Bill Gates sent out the famous mail. Mike and, and Dave LeBlanc wrote the writing secure code book and they were behind you know, much of that stuff. Jen Easterly was nominated by President Biden and confirmed by the Senate you know, to, to, the, to the, um, the cyber uh, security agency and infrastructure agency. Chris Weisopel, you know, who is one of the nicest human beings in the world, um, was, you know, was one of the loft guys who testified in front of Congress that he could shut the internet down in 30 seconds. Um, absolute freaking legend. Um, you know, you got John Viega, who wrote the first book on application security. Jack Daniels, who started B-Sides. Um, you know, I, uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to kind of sometimes take a step back and realize the impact of that. When I send Bruce Schneier an email and he immediately responds back saying it would be an honor to give a message to OWASP, you, you know the impact that, that it has had. And uh, I just wanna make sure that everyone knows that because that is your work. That is the work that everyone has contributed to has, has that impact on the project. Um, oh, I'm restarting the slide. I got to figure out how to forward it versus do that. Okay, so here's here's the final slide um, for for this, and um, this, if frankly, is my wish for a wasp. And this is, you know, is 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 things that I would love to see happen over the space of the next twenty years. Um, whether it does or not is is ultimately down to the collective. But again, what I hope is is that. OWASP will have strong leadership because, you know, back to the slide that I had of the wasp pulling down the, the statue, there's the old phrase that, you know, in all the towns and all the cities, there's no statues celebrating committees. And if OWASP is to fulfill its potential, it's not going to do that through committees. Um, democracy is, is a wonderful thing, but you have to have democracy where someone sets out a vision for something and everyone votes for that vision. If you don't have that, things will essentially stay in a status quo. And that's been the truth throughout the whole of history. Um, and there is a giant opportunity for a wasp to really take itself to the next step. Um, and when I say next step, of course, like look at what it's achieved so far. It's amazing. I think uh, Andrew Vanderstock sent me some stats the other day. I think it was 130, 150,000 people have attended or RSVP to events since 2019. Um, imagine, imagine that. I think there have been three and a half or four thousand events since since that time. Um, it's a huge, huge um, input and huge, huge accomplishment. But I think that we are faced at a precipice of where things are changing. You you heard at the beginning how technology has has changed over the space of the last twenty years, and uh, and someone once said to me, you know what. Well, do you have any regrets about OWASP? And one of them is calling it OWASP, right? WASP was an amazing catchy name and it was probably partly, you know, due to, due to um, making it memorable. But the, the web is, is not, uh, you know, is not really the focus of a lot of application security today. We are sat here in essentially the second generation of, of cloud. The cloud vendors, um, are being commoditized themselves by the big data companies like Snowflake, like Databricks, Cloudera. Um, and they are building on infrastructure. We see companies like Netflix, uh, sorry, like Netlify, you know, basically create a full end-to-end -end developer suite on top again, on top of cloud services. And so you are really in the early stages of cloud 2.0. Um, and who knows, maybe it is not Azure, it is not AWS, it is not Google Cloud that come out of the winners out of that. Snowflake is, I, I think, worth about $60 billion right now. And it's essentially a you know, data, data lake, data warehouse built on top of the cloud infrastructure to make that data available to application developers. So I think it's really important that OWASP takes a look at that, takes a look at what's happened over the last 20 years and ensures that it is 100% relevant for what is about to happen in terms of that industry. You will see things like machine learning that become absolutely prevalent and are all reliant on software security. We've seen attacks, cross-site scripting, all of these SQL injection things. But imagine if we wind up with an era of what are often referred to as salami attacks in machine learning, where essentially machine learning, machine learning algorithms all give slightly different results each time, and they're slightly biased towards something. 
we could see catastrophic problems with, with things like that. And application security has a massive space to play, whether it's through things like formal methods, whether it's, you know, big data statistical analysis, or, you know, just looking at machine learning models and all of those things themselves. They are all application security problems that um, I don't really see people kind of looking at today. Um, cryptocurrency, ransomware, like it's all driven by software. And uh, there's going to be massive things that OWASP needs to, needs to provide leadership around that. The next one is, is that, you know, communities are developing in very, very complex ways and it's absolute scale. And there's an opportunity for OWASP today to basically partner or essentially join with the Linux Foundation and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And I hope that it does. Um, that has been going for a long time. And if you are proud of the OWASP um, reach as, as very well you should be, you can look up to that foundation as having you know, a step function up. Um, 40,000 people go to conferences, uh, you know, hundreds of million, millions of dollars flow through, through that foundation. And you know, we can look at places like Apache, we can look at places like the Cloud Native Computing Foundation where Node joined, the Node Foundation joined. Um, we have Kubernetes over there, we have you know, Hyperledger. It's some of the world's most important cloud software. And the Linux Foundation would really like OWASP to embrace that, to lead the application security part for all of that software. And that's a huge opportunity for OWASP to take the next level and you know, essentially step up onto the world's, um, the world's tech stage and, and go help drive the securing of that. And I don't think that that conflicts with anything around the fundamental beliefs that OWASP has around vendor neutrality, about things being open to all. But it is a change in the model. It is in some ways a top-down model versus a bottoms-up model. It's not relying on individuals to contribute, but it's reliant on vendors and big tech to contribute. But the impact that some of those organizations have had has been absolutely absolutely tremendous. And the opportunity and the reputation, the great work that OWASP has done allows you to step into that plate. Um, and, uh, and frankly, I've been trying to help broker that, uh, that to happen, um, or at least for it to be taken seriously. And, uh, and I think it's really important that everyone understands that. Um, you'll also see the Source Labs sign down there. Um, and you heard from Justin Dolly, who uh, CSO of Source Labs, former CSO of VMware and ServiceNow and other great companies. And Source Labs are building on the OWASP ZAP project, which is an amazing, an amazing project. Um, but if we look at, you know, the opportunity to essentially create an end-to-end -end tool stack on what OWASP has built, um, there really isn't a model. There's no commercial model, or, again, around for that amazing software that gets built to figure out how to partner with those vendors and have those vendors contribute back and everyone drives, drives further forward. I think if OWASP had a chief, pro a chief product officer, um, which really is just a fancy way of saying someone who owns product management, engineering, and, you know, and tests and all those functions that could pull together all of the tools into a cohesive suite, OWASP could quite literally have the best end-to-end -end security suite for application security in the world. Um, there is no doubt about that. You have dependency track, this, you know, Jeremy Long and Steve Spring, an amazing, you know, project. We have, you know, Zap, you know, Simon Bennett's, the most amazing project and loads and loads of others, but they all work independently, right? They haven't been pulled together into, into a suite of tools. And, you know, you saw, you saw Tom at uh, the founder of GitHub, like the relationships through people like me and other people to get into the, 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 the right people at the industry to make these happen could really get OWASP tools in front of developers and making massive amounts of difference, along with things like getting into Kubernetes and, and all of these great things. So there's huge opportunity there, and I hope that OWASP takes that, that opportunity. Um, I think that um, the last thing is, is that I hope OWASP um, you know, becomes the guardians of the galaxy, and as well as all of these projects that are going on, get some momentum behind fixing things. Um, I know there are odd sporadic things happening, but, you know, frankly, I was in, I was in Sydney in Australia um, meeting with, uh, with the, the head of the Apache Foundation just when the big Apache struts thing kicked him. And what struck us over a cup of coffee, and frankly, one of, one of the most frustrating things for me was that you've got a whole bunch of amazing security people. He had a whole bunch of, a bunch of legacy pro problems in, in struts, and the two people weren't together. 
And I think that there's a huge opportunity to mobilize these people, you, with an amazing skill, an amazing skill set, amazing knowledge, that when these problems occur in critical infrastructure and all these, these, these software projects that are powering the world, to secure them. Um, not just keep creating guidance for, for other people, but jump in and go do the work. Um, because you can essentially become the world's force of going and, and fixing those those things. And I think there's 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 an amazing opportunity for OWASP to go do that. So that's that. Um, I have a final you know set of things that I would like to say, which is that you know from from starting OWASP, um, I encourage everyone to go take a risk. Right? Things don't feel comfortable um, when you go do it, but you've seen what happens when I wasn't comfortable and just yeah. You know, you know, who gives a crap what anyone else thinks? Go make a change. Um, there is a massive opportunity ahead of OWASP to go to go make that change. Um, and I hope that, that, that you guys take that risk. Um, dream big. You can see what happens from some, you know, silly idea and, and small thing and a, and a mailing list. Um, don't take no for an answer. Just drive through. You've got to have conviction in, in how you do things. Um, you know, there is this, this phrase is that, um, you know, and, and I know this has been prolific at Microsoft and other places, that if you don't cannibalize yourself, someone else is going to cannibalize you. Software security, as you heard from Bruce Schneier and everyone else, is, is, is one of the most critical things that we're, we're all faced with today. And so it's top of mind. It's not a niche anymore. Um, and, you know, it is absolutely critical for, for governments, for big tech company you know, high tech companies um, and everyone else to go solve. Um, and I hope that OWASP stays at the, the center of that, but that will mean reinventing itself. Um, and that will mean, you know, figuring out how to adapt. Um, the last thing is, is that, you know, I have met some amazing people. You saw that message from Dan Cuthbert, Sharif, Andrew Vanderstock. There are just people that are just fantastic humans. And uh, it doesn't mean to say you can't have, uh, have conflict. There's been loads of conflict with OWASP over the time um, fr from my sort of er early beef to, to lots of other things that have, that have happened. Um, but, you know, everyone uh, that I've seen treats everyone else as great humans with, with great respect. And, and I think that is absolutely fantastic for, for a community to do that. It genuinely feels like a community. And when you hear Sharif you know, turn to, to someone that he met through OWASP to talk about a potential cancer situation, which thankfully wasn't, wasn't the, the case um, for, for Sharif. Like, you really do understand how, how good humanity and, and just being good to each other matters. And, um, and when you do that, I you know, just want to encourage everyone to kind of constantly think about that. You know, life's too short not to do, not to do great things. And OWASP, frankly, is amazing. And, and, and as you've seen from... Uh, from all of the work that it's achieved and the, the credits from just those, those people in the industry. Congratulations. I don't think I can say anything else. Um, the achievement has been amazing. And uh, whether it's 10 years or, or 20 years, um, I look forward to coming back and, uh, and, and talking again and, and watching the continued progress. So thank you for listening. I will stop sharing my screen now and uh, I think we'll take questions. Thank you for that, Mark. Um, so while we wait for some questions, I have some questions prepared for you. Um, early on, uh, towards your closing, you, you alluded to going back 20 years, um, you may have not named it OWASP. It was, it was catchy, but we're not doing a ton of web work these days. Um, th there's a lot of work we have going on with, with IoT and the cloud. What would you have named it? Oh, I'm not, I am not a marketing guy, Jeevan. I am not a marketing guy, but I have thought about it. I, it will probably be called the Code Security Project. So if we think about infrastructure as code, you know, today, um, whether it's mobile, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, code is, is thematic through it all. I think that the, the, the nature of code has gone from crafting everything to be an individual to, in many ways, consuming open source, consuming APIs, or you know, defining infrastructure. So um, that has been the, the, the constant theme throughout it. So my suspicion is it would be that, but uh, I am not the right guy to do branding, unfortunately. Well, no, fortunately, I'm not the right person to do branding. No, that's perfect. Um, yeah, it, it, this is a fun conversation to have in every chapter meeting is it comes up at least once and in any chapter meeting you go to, somebody's trying to rename OLAS because we do so much more than web application security. Um, the other thing is, you know, you talked about the next 20 years and, and, and the, the future of OWASP. You know, if you were to, and I know I'm asking you right on the spot, but if you were to come up with a mission statement for the next 20 years, what would that sound like? 
I, I think it's pretty simple. I think it's secure the world's software. That's great. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, look, like, like, like I said about, you know, um, the opportunity with cloud native computing and, and things like that's where Kubernetes is. That's where, you know, the world's most important software projects like Node are. And, you know, when, and that's, you know, where, where Google and Microsoft and all of the major tech people are, you know, are, are basically putting massive amounts of money and massive resources into. And those guys want you guys to go secure that stuff. They want you to be the leaders in application security and secure that stuff. And I think that's just a huge opportunity to literally secure the world's most important software. And, uh, and yeah, so huge opportunities to go do it. Thanks for that, Mark. Um, so, so one, one kind of broad question, if you're coming back in 20 years and you, you have some, you have, obviously you have a view into the industry, you see how security is going, you've, you've seen OWASP mature and evolve over the years. You, you've already talked about some of the things that OWASP should do to be successful in the next 20 years. What are some of the things that OWASP should not do to be successful in the next 20 years? <laughs> well, look, it, it doesn't matter what you do, you're going to be successful. <laughs> that's, that's the reality of it, right? I think you could be, you know, some people are going to be more successful than others. But, um, you know, if you surround yourself by great people, you'll always be successful and OWASP is surrounded by great people. So, you know, whichever path OWASP takes, um, it's going to be absolutely great. And, and I'm sure, you know, if, I, if, I, if I'm lucky enough to be invited back in 20 years, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be amazing. I think that... Um, my personal take is, you know, if you if you're a developer and you rock up to OWASP, it's pretty hard to to navigate, right? There is ten of everything, <laughs> and um, you know, um, someone once referred to it, and this is not my words, but someone once referred to it as the junk drawer of security. And you know, there are projects around drones and you know everything, but like I said, if you go type in secure coding guidelines into into Google. You know, it's a document that's 10 years old. And if you think about the user experience of a developer trying to find how to solve a problem, you know, that is, um, is, is a tough place to be. So my hope is if you look at things, you know, uh, look at, uh, at, a, at another set of projects, maybe CNCF, maybe Apache, where you see absolute critical infrastructure over there, is that there are very clear you know, top level projects. And I know OWASP has this, it has, you know, flagship projects and, and other projects. But like I said, I think that there's the opportunity to have static analysis, IAST, DAST, you know, all working in a suite of tools that work with GitHub, that work with GitLab, that run in CI CD pipelines and developers can come. And, and frankly, I also hope that OWASP turns into being a SaaS provider. Like why those things can't be provided up there. You have dependency check, like, you know, and again, thinking big, like, why don't you guys become the distributor for open source libraries and secure open source libraries, clean them, let developers go pull clean ones, let them pull the profiles out of it. Um, people will fund that. And uh, I know people that will fund it. <laughs> um, so, you know, if you guys want to figure out how to go do it, I'll broker the conversations for people to do it because it's critical work that happens on the internet, right? And so, you know, my hope is those type of evolutions happen versus, thousands of more you know small small projects right and, and is that what you is that what you meant when you said go build it secure through oas basically collecting curating fixing these these critical open source libraries these frameworks into something usable is, is, is that where you were going with that I, I mean look the 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 beauty about reusable software um is, is that you know you get to replicate it the downside is you replicate vulnerabilities and so, you know, when you look at things, like I said, about when that big struts problem happened, or, you know, you've got software like Kubernetes, which, you know, frankly, everyone is, is running, um, you know, and, 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 and big open source databases, why not go and secure those things? We've seen bug bounties, right, where, you know, people are doing that for money, but you've got some of the most talented people here. Go fix those things in code, right? Go watch the commits. There are open source projects where developers are moving incredibly fast. And there is the opportunity for essentially the world's security team. This isn't a security team inside of a commercial company, but go partner with all those big open source pro projects and, and, and fix them and secure them. You've got, I think Adam Shostak's on, right? You got, you know, people that basically invented threat modeling. <laughs> go, go teach those things. You, you, you have all of the pieces to go to go do it, and uh, but I think it's kind of a matter of collectively getting getting those things, and I'm focusing on a few small things, right? It's 
like build the world's best security tool chain, tool chain, right? Figure out how to go do those things that it's, it's all there. Yeah, I totally get it. It's, it's quite frightening when you go to install something in Node and says, pull down 3,000 packages. You're like, oh boy, hopefully somebody's reviewed those 3,000 packages. Of course, and we, and we know that they do, right? Of course they don't, right? Like I said, there were, you know, we, we did that, that work with, uh, with a couple of the agencies. It's about a quarter of a million you know, vulnerabilities that are in there. And you heard Steve Christie say, you know, OWASP's a curse and a blessing, right? <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a mass problem that needs to, be, needs to be addressed. You guys could step up and do it. Awesome. Well, I'm very motivated now. Mark, Good. thank you so much for this. Thank you for your time. And, and we'll give someone, some people some breaks and, and we'll be back in a bit. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark.